Good morning, Jaywalkers. Good morning. Happy Sunday. So this is a little bit of a bittersweet message for us. It's our last message that we will be recording in what we call our miracle house. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We okay. believe that God does miracles. And for the last few days, we've been moving. It's been sort of sad mm -hmm. because this has been our home for two years. And, you know, every place is not really our home. Everything's kind of a gift from God. But this place was really just, it came at a time when we needed it. Somebody saw a blessing. It was an answer. saw and wanted to bless us. Mm -hmm. And it was an answer to prayer. So Marcus and Cindy Holland, I want to just thank you guys thank for you. listening to God and for seeing us and um, just giving us the chance to stay at your at your beautiful house for these last two years. It's been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. We were staying at a tiny house and it's like 700 something square feet. That's not a tiny house. I mean, the show tiny house, they're like 200 something square feet. Mm -hmm. But we were staying there and grandma and grandpa were with us and we didn't have enough room. And God answered a prayer from a prayer walk that we were doing one day. Yes. And we've been here, but we just moved all of our stuff. Shout out to Dylan Armstrong for the help, helping out. Dylan. The man's a beast. If you <laughs> haven't met the man, he's a beast. But we are all moved and this is an empty house now. And we're, we're here just filming this last message. Um, but we want to talk to you today about a man named Solomon. Mm -hmm. So Solomon in the Bible, he is a king. He's actually King David's son. And uh, King David is sort of like the great hope of Israel. And he did some amazing things. He's the same King David that fought Goliath. He's the same King David that won a lot of battles, did a lot of good things for Israel, became super famous. Uh, toward the end of his life, he had a couple like mistakes that he made and things didn't go so great with his family towards the end. His own kids were kind of like against him in some areas, specifically his first son. Yep. And then he had a son from uh, the lady that he actually had a little bit of an affair with and his name was Solomon. So this is Solomon. Growing up, must have been tough seeing his dad go through some of that stuff. Yeah. Because he would have seen it. And now his dad is toward the end of his life and he's handing him God's people. Like the kingdom of God, the nation of Israel, getting handed to him. And to lead, to be their leader. And he doesn't feel ready. He actually, at one point in the book of Kings, calls himself like a child. He's like, I'm still like a child. You, any of you feel like you're not ready for some of the responsibilities that you have? Well, this guy is to lead God's kingdom. After there's been a little bit of like tension, a little bit of turmoil, and there's people who are kind of like stirring some things up, and he gets handed the kingdom. And God shows up to him one day mm -hmm. in the book of Chronicles uh, is one place that it's chronicled, ironically. <laughs> and, it, and it says there, starting in chapter, I think I'm in chapter 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7 through 12 is what I'm going to read. It says, that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask for whatever you want me to give you. God's never done that wow. to me, but he hasn't done that to me either. <laughs> but I don't know if I would have been as smart as Solomon was no, in his response. Not. I'd have been like, "Give me some money so I can fix all my problems." <laughs> I need insurance. <laughs> we do, but we trust God. You know, we're working through some things. So it says here in verse eight, Solomon answered God, "You have shown great kindness to David, my father, and have made me king in his place." Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed. For you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? So what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom and knowledge. Man, so smart. So he asked for wisdom and knowledge. He didn't even ask for it for himself. He so wants he it so he can lead people. Yeah. Not so he can be like, look how wise and knowledgeable Solomon is. Yeah, no. It's so he can lead God's people. <laughs> what a humble he, request. Yeah. He must have seen the how hard it was for his dad. And he was like, help I need me. help, <laughs> God. <laughs> That's what I need. So God says something back to him in verse 11. He says, Solomon, uh, he says, God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possessions or honor, nor for the death of your enemies, all things he could have asked for and maybe mm -hmm. wanted to, 
or I would have wanted to. And since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given you. And I will also give you wealth, possessions, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none after you will have. Mm -hmm. So man, yeah. that's cool. He asked for the right thing, and he got that and much more. So wisdom and knowledge came his way. And so he's the guy who ends up bringing peace to Israel. It says like around all of his borders, there was peace, like east, north, south, west. It's never been that way before in Israel. And it's never been that way since. Yeah. They've had a lot of issues with neighboring people. You still hear about it in the news today. And one thing that we're supposed to do is just side note, pray for Israel. Mm -hmm. So keep praying for God's people because they are still God's chosen people. And he has a special place in his heart for the nation of Israel. And we are supposed to be with them and stand with them. So mm -hmm. we pray and we stand with Israel. And Solomon had peace on all of his sides. He actually wrote, was the primary writer of like three books of the Bible. Um, he shows up in other places as well, a little bit in Psalms. But basically the book of Proverbs the wisdom that is found in the book of Proverbs cause, comes from the wisdom of this man who asked God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And he also wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And he also wrote the book of Song of Solomon. So today we just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is an amazing book. It is basically a collection of sayings and things learned from Solomon, this wise person. So God gave him wisdom. And the first thing that I want you to notice is the wisdom that he received, the knowledge that he received was from God. So there are a lot of sayings out there. There are a lot of belief systems or popular things out there. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to give us a type of wisdom mm -hmm. or a type of knowledge. But that wisdom and that knowledge isn't always godly. And so we have to be aware that sometimes the things that people tell us are wise, yeah. they're not actually the best things for us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the way that the world teaches us isn't God's way. But this is from God. This is God's spirit speaking to Solomon, the wisdom and the knowledge that he asked for. So in the book of Proverbs, we're getting the heart of God. We're hearing the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. And that's important to note because that's not what's out there. You got you to gotta, you gotta go to the Bible for that. You got to find it in the truth of God. Now, there's pieces of it places. There's partial truths places. But the word of God is a place that contains the full truth. And sometimes per partial truths are even worse. Oh, the, the, the devil tried to use partial truths yeah. on Jesus and... and part of what's in scripture. They're yeah. dangerous because they look, they're disguised. Mm -hmm. So the, the book of Proverbs, how many, how many chapters are in the book of Proverbs? Quiz? 31. 31. She knows that because that's how many days are in the biggest month. And a cool way to read the book of Proverbs is to dedicate a book a day. So a chapter. It, I mean, yeah, not a book. Not the whole book. It's just one book. <laughs> a chapter a day. Yeah. So if you read one chapter a day, like today is... June 27th. There you go. And so we are going to read Proverbs 27. What's cool about that is even if you happen to um, not know what proverb you're on, you probably can figure out what day you're on. So you can go ahead in there and open up the book of Proverbs, which we're going to do right now, and go to verse 27 or chapter 27, verse 1. And when you read the book of Proverbs, we're just going to kind of read part of this chapter. Mm -hmm. Know that what it basically is, is some sayings. And those sayings are wisdom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like, a verse will be like parallel ideas. Two ideas that either agree with each other or kind of contrast with each other. So they'll either, like, promote the same thought or they'll kind of be like, this happens. Or the opposite of that is this. Uh, I think they call that parallelism because they're, like, 
next to each other, but not the same. And sometimes they're next to each other and you can read them and they're saying the same idea. But there's so much in them. Honestly, when we were looking at chapter 27 today, we had to look stuff up. Yes. Like, I don't know what that word means. Yeah, it's okay to do that. I don't know what that thing is. And we just take some time and slow down and look it up. And that's okay. We don't have all the answers. I don't know anybody who does have all the answers. And if they do, they're probably one of those people that just think they have all the answers, but actually doesn't. So we're going to read to you Proverbs 27. Um, and the reason why we're going to do this is because I want you to see the wisdom that's in one of these. And then each of us are going to talk about maybe one verse that stood out to us. Um, it might not be the same verse that stands out to you. This coming Wednesday, we're going to have a chance to kind of look into some of the verses that stand out to us in maybe Proverbs 27 or maybe a different proverb. Not sure which one we'll do yet because okay. that's going to be a different day, you know, yeah. but we can look at these and we can gain wisdom from it. And it's something that you can do every day. You decided that you were going to do this at one point in your life, didn't you? Well, yeah. When I was younger, I used to do, I used to read a proverb every day, like a, a chapter a day and, um, and so I, I, I loved it. I always felt like I was get, gaining wisdom when I was reading it. I, you know, an insight to like, if you're going through something like, and you just ask God, God to speak to me and you read like the Proverbs are so good with wisdom and, yeah. and just to tell you, but even lately I have talked to the, um, prayer team about this, that like, I just feel like, like lately, like the middle of this month, I felt like God was saying, Hey, look at the problems Go back again. To that. And, and so I started like, it was uh, the 14th and I started reading through it and oh my goodness, I had my Bible and I had my highlighter and like, I like, it was like food to my soul. Like yeah. it was like, I was like taking in that and, and I read it like you so many times, so many times for years and years, every month I would read every day, like for years and years. And it's brand new. Since I was young, like more than 20 years. And then I just had like a span of maybe like, you know, maybe five years that I haven't like, I've read it like through the years. And you've read other parts of the Bible. But I didn't do it like every month, read the day. And I was like, I went back to it and it was like, I don't know, it was just so refreshing. It was like yeah. a new drink of water or like... And it was like, oh, this applies and this applies. And, but it was crazy as what applied before. It doesn't apply anymore. Was different than what applies now. It's not that it didn't, because yeah. it does still, but like it, there was something different in it. And I kept, oh, this is new. This is new. Like, and it's, and it's crazy how it can be new after I've read it that many times. Yeah, it's good. But that's what God's been saying. Like, read through the Proverbs. And so maybe if you're like struggling and you're like, I try to read the Bible, but like, I don't know where to start or I don't know what to do next or I just want to try something different. The book of Proverbs. Maybe that's a place that God's trying to show you. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and wisdom is an important thing. Reverence, respect, looking at God, seeing like wanting to learn more, wanting to know more. Not just for you because even in Solomon's case, it wasn't for him. It was so that he could be a better leader. It was so he could understand more. Because the truth is, you are getting wisdom in yeah. something, right? Yeah. But but it's not necessarily truth that you're getting. Yeah. And so, um, I think Jill wants to read you something. I'll let you read it. You're gonna have me read it. Yeah. So just we're we're gonna read you this thing because this is like the world's wisdom. Before we read Proverbs 27, and I want you to see the difference. Right. This was actually posted by a pastor's wife. And so it's somebody um, that we see their posts and we read this one and it was kind of like, wow. Kind of hurt my heart. Yeah. And we love, we love people. We're not trying to call anybody out, but we just want to show you what the world's wisdom sounds like. So this is kind of what a lot of people would say today. And this is what it says. Your life belongs to you. It's not selfish to want your life to benefit you. It's not selfish to ask, what am I getting out of this? And if the answer is not much, it's not selfish to walk away. It's amazing to be humble and empathetic and understanding, but you are not to be a martyr. You're allowed to be first on your priority list. Your life is something you create, not something you have to endure. Yes, you have to work hard to create the life you want, but it's better than living on autopilot, letting other people decide what direction, what your direction will be. I hope you step up to your life, that you realize that it's not selfish to want the best for yourself. 
It's not selfish to create a life that makes you happy. That isn't waiting for validation for, uh, from others. It's never selfish to build a loving, beautiful home within yourself. So when, when I read that, mm -hmm. there are parts of that that I say, okay. Okay. There's like, I hear what you're saying there. But when I compare it to what the Bible says, mm -hmm. and when I think of the life that Christ called you to, or the life that God has created for you, because we don't create our own lives. God creates our life. And so there are things in here that I think are dangerous, but that are what the world says. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that this person and, made and, up. It's and, a quote that they and in my were life, quoting. And myself, if I read that naturally, it, it sounds beautiful. It sounds like something I want to do. Yeah, let me get my life straight and figure things let out. Me do and, me. And, me. and we shouldn't be like worried about necessarily what, what other people think, think or the validation yeah. from them. But what's missing from this is God. Yeah. What's missing is God. And he's the point, and he's the author, and he's the creator. And if you're just a little off, yeah, you're off. Well, if you just go a little bit off in one direction and you keep walking in that direction, over time you end up very far away from the destination. Just imagine that, walking further and further away, and as that just a little bit spreads out, and it, you can end up further from that narrow path that God has called us to. Mm -hmm. So I want you to compare that to the wisdom that we're about to hear from Proverbs chapter 27. Okay, let's do this. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. One who is full loathes honey, but the one who is hungry, to one who is hungry, everything bitter is sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest is a man who strays from his home. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Do not forsake your friend and your father's friend, and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple goes on and suffer for it. The simple go on and suffer for it. Take a man's garment when he has put up security for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he puts up security for an adulteress. Whoever blesses his neighbor with a loud voice rising early in the morning will be counted as cursing. That was funny. Mm -hmm. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a quarrelsome wife are alike. To restrain her is to restrain the wind or to grasp oil in one's right hand. Thank you for not being quarrelsome, wife. <laughs> iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. That's a pretty famous one. Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit. And he who guards his master will be honored. As in, as in water, face reflects face, so the heart of a man reflects the man. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, and never satisfied are the eyes of man. The crucible is for silver and the furnace for gold, and a man is tested by his praise. Crush a fool in a mortar with a pestle, along with crushed grain, yet his folly will not depart from him. Well known, know well, can't read today. today. Know well the condition of your flocks and give attention to your herds, for riches do not last forever. And does a crown endure to all generations. When the grass is gone and the new growth appears and the vegetation of the mountains is gathered, the lambs will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. There will be enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household and maintenance for your girls. So even though we ended with some farming stuff that maybe we're not used to today, what it's saying is God's gonna provide for you. Mm -hmm. And in this entire proverb are probably enough things to keep you busy for an entire week. Mm -hmm. And if that happens and you stay busy on a single proverb for an entire week when you're reading these things, let that be. It's not a, about getting through a certain number of things. It's about letting the Holy Spirit speak to you. So, and before you even read it, ask. 
yeah. the Holy Spirit. Pray, just pray God, and say, God, give me wisdom, me. just like Solomon Show me did. Through this, because you want to have gain His wisdom, yeah. you know. So I, I would always pray before I'd start reading it. It's which awesome, is awesome. Yeah. yeah, and then you pray, and then you stop. If you stop, like I could have stopped on the first two verses. Actually, sure. verse two is one um, that I think is amazing. So as we revisit just two quick verses to kind of say like, God, what are you saying in these? Because that's a question you have to ask. You don't just read it. This isn't just a book yeah. that you're just trying to get through. It's God speaking to you. And so when I read Proverbs 27 and I stop on verse two, that one jumped out at me. It says, let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. It's just, we look for praise. And it's like, we're, we're so wanting it and we're so hungry for it that we'll be like, hey, did you see what I did? Hey, did you notice this? And we want people to, to I see these. it. I got these. I did this. I just got this new thing. I... So we go and we praise ourselves. But the Bible says right here, it's not about you going and praising yourself. Live in such a way that somebody who doesn't even know you will look at your life and say, man, like, do you see what that person's doing? And the thing is, is when, when you see it, it's convicting your heart. So like, if I stopped on verse two, you'd be like, ooh. That's okay. something that I do. Okay, God. Work I'm on looking for praise. I need to work on that. Yeah. And that's something that the Bible says right there. Wisdom is not about you going and getting praise for yourself by talking about how great you are. Right? Wisdom is about mm. something else. Mm -hmm. It's about living a life that can be seen by others that make them go, what is it that is different about this person? Right. And you had one down here. Which one was yours? So, well, this is, I was, when we were going through this, there was one that like stuck out to me just now. It was different. And I don't know if I can find it. It was the one about jealousy. Do you Ooh. see it? I don't know if I can. I mean, it's in here. It's in here somewhere. We, it's, oh, right there. It's right here. Okay. Wrath says, is cruel. Yeah. Wrath is cruel. So this is not even one that we talked about before this, but. That's how the Holy Spirit does <laughs> no. it. But when he was reading it, it's, it, it's, so it's verse four. So you, I only got to verse four. You got to two. And I we didn't make four. it very far, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to us. That's so the it's point. like wrath is cruel and anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? And I just remember like when I was younger, you know, when we were, I'm just going to lay it out there when we were first dating. <laughs> and when we were first married, <laughs> I was so jealous. <laughs> it was so bad. And like, so, but what this verse is saying is that wrath is cruel and anger is overwhelming. Like those two things are bad, like being angry and whatever, but, but who can stand before jealousy? Like that is even worse, you know? And like, and I mean, you can be jealous of people's stuff or whatever. I really had an issue with jealousy with Mario and, and, you know, sometimes we still work on things, but like there was a point in my life where like, I see this, I read this verse and I had to say, God, if if, if that is not what you want in my life, I need you to take it out. Mm -hmm. You know, and I need, I need, I want it to be gone. And so like, you know, I read that and, and honestly it, it's like, you know, one, it's God like, you know, giving a check to me, yeah. you know, make sure. And then it's another of like, I see what God's done. Mm. Yeah. You know? So anyways, we didn't even go over that one, but yeah. that one kind of stuff. So I don't know if anybody's dealing with that right now and like, jealousy and and somebody getting what what they thought they were supposed to have or somebody else got it. having something better or mm. you know or even if it's a relationship like this person's in a relationship and i'm not or even you if you are in a relationship and it's like you know like that can just speak to you in any of those like yeah like god doesn't call us to be jealous but one thing that's interesting is jealousy is kind of like in a way it's kind of like it, it's because you care about something or because you love something. So then you read in the Bible elsewhere that God's a jealous God and you think God's jealous, but didn't he just say that was bad? Mm -hmm. But God's jealous in a kind of a different way. Mm -hmm. it's, in the, it's in a love, like he wants your love so bad. It's like he wants to know you so badly. So even though that might've been what was the case with, with you know, why you were feeling love for me yeah, and just kind of like humanly got distracted or thrown off yeah. by other things, but God doesn't get distracted or thrown off by other things. He knows that his love is what's best for us. And I had to decide that my love for God hmm. was greater than jealousy. Like I wanted God more than I wanted that. 
Yeah. And that's kind of like God's jealousy. For, God's like, he wants us you, more than anything. Do you want, are you choosing me above that? Yeah. And he calls us to choose him. Yeah. Yeah. And when we do, and it's, and it's not selfish when God does it because he's literally the best thing for us. It's the most loving thing we could, he could do for us is to be unaccepting of anything that tries to steal our focus or our love right, from him right. because he's the best thing for us. Right. So that's kind of, we want to encourage you guys to read the book so of Proverbs. Got to verse two, I got to verse four, but there's so many more and read that. Take a little minute, take some time right you? now and look at that. And like I said, we're going to kind of probably on Wednesday when we go into it, we're going to talk about that more, but wisdom, knowledge, those things come from the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. God asked Solomon what he wanted. He gave him what he wanted. God gives it to us through the man, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who came and walked this earth and lived the perfect life and died so that we could know God, so that we could experience him in our life. Mm -hmm. He's what's best for us. He loves us that much that he came and he died for us. Mm -hmm. So if you have never accepted that gift that he gives you, it's like he wants to give you a new life. He wants to give you the wisdom and the knowledge of him, mm -hmm. understanding of him. And you can pray a prayer. The prayer is not what changes you. It's the condition of your heart. It's realizing that you've been following and doing and seeking wisdom in the wrong places. So let's pray that prayer together right now. Say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for coming to this earth. Thank you for coming to this earth. To show me how to live. To show me how to live. And for dying for me. For dying for me. I accept the gift. I accept the gift. Of your death. Your death. On the cross. Oh. To cover my sins. To cover my sins. In worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom. Help me to know the difference. Help me to know the difference. Between what's you and what's not. What's you and what's not. What's the world and what's spirit. What's the world and what's spirit. Move in my heart. Move in my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Make you my Lord and Savior. Send your spirit to guide me. Send your spirit to guide me. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to give them a challenge to do to read. Yeah. I want to officially challenge you. Ooh. Well, let's do this. How about if read Proverbs twenty seven today? Yeah. And why don't you if you message us or DM us on Ooh. Instagram? And let us know what the verse, what verse stood out to you and why. Wow. Fun. That'd be great, right? Yeah. Maybe we can read some of those on Wednesday or something like that. That'd be fun. And then, um, and then every other day, just read. It's, it's not, it's going to take like three minutes. Yeah. It doesn't take that long. Maybe a few. Maybe. Three Maybe a few. Five. Yeah. But you don't have to do everything. Just wait till the spirit and speaks to you. If you say, well, I'm not a reader, you don't know me. <laughs> you can be a reader <laughs> yeah it's where i started <laughs> in proverbs it'll make you good well we love you guys uh we do bye house see we you do. later yes but really uh and wisdom will tell you <laughs> to be thankful for what god gave you and not like be upset that is yeah you don't have it anymore huh. so i am thankful that god gave us two years here yeah with grandma and grandpa. We trust him. And I'm excited for what he has. Love you guys. <laughs> Love you. See you Wednesday. <laughs> Bye.